dental injuries. So um, I'm going to start with just some basic terminology. This is a slide that goes through all uh, the uh, tooth and anatomy um, lingo. Uh, a couple things uh, we're going to focus in here on. Um, so the uh, teeth, the occlusal, uh, what they're talking about there is the chewing surface of the posterior teeth. Um, when we're talking about malocclusion, that is essentially when you're biting down, essentially that you want those occlusal teeth making contact with each other on either side um, with the molars uh, uh, from the top or upper. Uh, generally speaking, when you're talking about like dental alveolar fractures, those are typically more anterior. So you're looking at the central, lateral, and, and cuspid teeth. Uh, as well as the, um, the incisal teeth. So uh, fractured teeth. So fractured teeth um, can lead to damage of the alveolar bone that we talked about before, uh, as well as the periodontium. Occur as a result of direct trauma, uh, captain fall, so fall where there's direct contact between the teeth and the playing surface. Um, or direct contact with the, the teeth and uh, essentially a bony uh, part of an opponent or teammate. Differential di diagnosis, so you want to consider things like pulp necrosis, uh, other soft tissue injuries, avulsor sublux, sublux teeth, and dental alveolar fractures. Um, so you want to take a look with essentially viewing the teeth directly. Uh, take a look at malocclusion, trismus, where you have, they're having difficulty opening mouth. That may be an indication that they have an associated uh, zygomatic or mandibular fracture. Pain with mastication, so when they bite down, it actually hurts. And then the surrounding soft tissue injuries, such as intraoral lacerations. Um, you want to have these patients uh, referred to a dentist. They need to get to see a dental x-ray. A fractured crown can be stuck back on temporarily using dressing. Um, and composite by a, dent a dentist if they're on site. Um, and then uh, usually they, they would eventually need a root canal treatment uh, if the fracture involves the, uh, the gingiva or just subgingivally. The fracture is through the root. Uh, generally speaking, the tooth needs to be extracted. Avulsin sublux teeth, that's where the tooth actually becomes loose from its socket within the alveolar bone. Um, the differential is other de dental injuries. Um, on examination, that you can actually move the tooth. The, the difference between this and a, a dental alveolar fracture, once again, is that it's usually isolated tooth. Sometimes you may have um, two teeth back to back that are subluxed, um, but they should be able. To, you should be able to move them in different directions as opposed to a uh, dental alveolar fracture where the segment moves as one altogether and the teeth themselves are still in inside you in the socket and fixed to that socket. Investigation, you want to take a, an x-ray and take a look once again for an underlying dental alveolar fracture. And the other one you want to consider is if you don't find the tooth and you're concerned if the patient's unconscious, you consider doing a chest x-ray um, as they can aspirate the teeth. Um, in terms of management, obviously in children, you don't want to be placing deciduous teeth. Um, if it's not deciduous in terms of permanent teeth and adolescents and adults, you want to be replacing those within six hours. You can transport normal saline. Uh, don't remove, um, the, try not to scrub the tooth. You can remove obviously any kind of gross contamination such as spinach or something like that, but don't uh, don't scrub the tooth because it can damage the, uh, the underlying ligament, which um, essentially won't heal appropriately. Um, you can split the tooth, uh, the surrounding teeth, essentially using aluminum foil uh, until they're seen by a dental specialist. Always look for dental fragments as well in the mouth, so taking a look and uh, making sure that you're not missing um, any kind of uh, associated intraoral lacerations once again. Pulpal necrosis can be a difficult one to catch uh, early on, but essentially there's a necrosis of the dental pulp second injury, um, which leads to shearing of the blood vessels. Be total or partial. Um, once again, uh, always as a result of trauma. You typically see a discoloration of purplish or gray um, uh, tooth. And uh, they may be associated with a localized gum abscess. In terms of clinical diagnosis, you want to do an x ray, rule out once again a dental alveolar fracture. In terms of management, uh, the tooth needs to be extracted. 
uh, or root canal <coughs> needs to be done. Periural lacerations. So I'm going to start with tongue lacerations. Uh, tongue is uh, essentially a large muscle inside the mouth. Uh, this can happen as a result of trauma, generally speaking. Trauma leads to um, biting down with the tongue in between the teeth. Uh, it can have an associated lip and um, face laceration. You want to always make sure you take a look inside the mouth once again. Make sure you don't have associated um, lip injury, lip lacerations, <coughs> or fractured teeth associated with it. And looking at both the, the top and underside of the tongue. Um, and these can result in a significant amount of swelling. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, in terms of management, so depending on what you have available, you may need just, just to refer these these people um, uh, to the hospital's emergency department. You've got to keep in mind that you need to maintain their airway and breathing in the interim. Uh, when you're talking about uh, fixing these things, it's helpful to have essentially um, something like a towel clamp where you can essentially put two gauze on either side uh, of the tongue, one on the ventral, one on the dorsal side, uh, to pull it out, pull the tongue out and keep it pulled out while um, you do the procedure, such as essentially putting some local anesthetic in and using absorbable sutures to uh, lacerate the tongue. Um, recommendation is uh, to try and use topical lidocaine. Uh, they may may want to even consider using a procedural station if they're in an emergency department. Um, and then um, obviously you want to be able to clean the clean the area as best as possible, remove any kind of uh, food which can lead to infection. Good news is that these tend to heal quite quickly uh, for the patient. Uh, but the other one is in terms of recommendations with respect to uh, eating after a repair. So you want to make sure that they're having essentially uh, thickened fluids or fluids uh, for the, the first week. Oral and palatal lacerations. Um, these happen with usually with significant trauma. Um, and there's a laceration either to the, the hard palate um, um, or uh, around through the gums. These are picked up on direct visualization. Um, you want to make sure that the airway is stable once again. Um, you consider obviously dental trauma uh, with these. So I'm taking a look at all the teeth. Um, you want to repair these if there's any kind of bleeding or gapping or potential for food entrapment with eating. And uh, remember to keep in mind the position of the parotid ducts um, bilaterally. And once again, this is something that requires absorbable sutures only for repair. Lip lacerations. Uh, these were once again also due to trauma, the direct uh, uh, trauma to the face. Uh, you can have associated oral palate or uh, tongue lacerations. Um, these are visible lacerations. These people are tricky. They're kind of similar to repairing uh, an episiotomy and the fact that there's essentially a three-dimensional uh, consideration for repair. So you have the outer uh, skin surface and the mucosal surface. And then deep to that, in a triangular fashion, you have the... Um, the deep floor of the, the wound, so they may need an absorbable suture um, to, to close the, the muscle layer underneath. Um, you want to make sure that your first suture is on the vermilion line, um, and that vermilion has to line up uh, perfectly. It can lead to step-offs, and that can actually affect even simple things like eating or whistling afterwards, so make sure you have that lined up. We we'll often recommend, essentially, using a, a marker to, to mark the line before putting in any local uh, as the, the lip can then swell up and it can uh, essentially affect the cosmetic result. And uh, generally speaking, you don't want to use anything larger than a 5.0 uh, on this area as well, also for a cosmetic appearance. <coughs>